Most people only know one way to create drop-down lists in Excel. You know, that basic method where you just type a few values into data validation. And that's fine if you're starting out, but honestly, you're missing out on so much more. Today, I'm going to show you five ways to build drop-downs that update themselves. They pull data from anywhere and even change depending on what you select. You can download the practice file from the link in the description or the pinned comment. Here's the perfect example of why this basic method breaks down. Here I'm tracking data across different branches, Miami, Orlando, and Tampa. But then I find out my company is expanding. So now I have to go back, select all the cells that contain the dropdowns, go back into data validation and edit the list to add the new branches. And if I have multiple worksheets using this same list, it's a nightmare updating them all. The smarter approach is to enter the list into cells and then turn that into a table. So on the home tab, Format table, choose a style. I'll go with this light style. It's detected my table has headers. Click OK, and we can rename the table. I'll call it branches table. This one step is crucial because tables are dynamic. They automatically expand when you add data and contract when you remove it. So let's edit these data validation lists to now point at the table. Back into data validation, and instead of these hard keyed sources, I simply select the column containing my branches. Click OK. And now if we look, we can see only those three branches. But if I add new branches and then we check the drop down list, you can see they're automatically included. This method scales beautifully. Whether you have five branches or 500, your drop downs stay current without any extra work from you. However, this method only works if the table containing your list items is on the same sheet as the drop down lists. So let's look at how we set this up if your lists are on another sheet. In this example, we're managing employee records, but the department list is on a separate sheet. Now, if you use the previous technique, we'll go and insert a date validation list and the source is the department list here. Click OK. It appears to work initially, but if we go back to the department list and add a new department, and then go back to our drop down list, you can see it's not included. So you'd have to manually edit the data validation list to include row 11. And that's just a whole load of hassle, thankfully, as an easy solution. Instead of referencing the table directly in the drop down list, first define a name for the list. So with the column selected on the formulas tab, define name. I'll call this department list or DEPT list for short. You can see in the refers to, it's referring to my department table, department column. I'll click OK. Then I'll go back in and edit the drop down list. So instead of referencing the table, I'm going to enter the name we just created. Now, if you can't remember the name, press the F3 key. It brings up the list of names. Select it and click OK or double click to insert it. Click OK there. And now we have the list that references my department list here. And if I add a new department, let's add customer service and go back. If we click on the drop down, there's customer service automatically included. Defining names to your ranges makes your spreadsheets easy to maintain. One person can manage the master department list, then every drop down across every sheet automatically stays current. However, notice this list isn't sorted. And what happens if your list has blanks? In that case, we can use a formula to extract a unique list that ignores the blanks. We can't put formulas that spill results directly in the drop down list dialog box. So I'll put it here in a cell beside the table, or you could put it away on a working sheet. I've got a placeholder for it here. So I want to sort the list. It needs to be unique. And I'm going to use to call to grab the list of items. And to call has an argument that allows me to ignore blanks. And that's number one. Close to cold, close unique, close sort. And we get our spilled list without the blank. Now I'll define a name for that cell. Define name. We'll call it department list. And I'm just going to reference the first cell in the spilled array, followed by the hash sign, which will tell Excel to return everything in that spilled array. And it will automatically include new items and contract if I delete any. Click OK. We'll go back to the drop down lists, select the cells and edit the range. So instead of depth list, we're going to insert our new name, which is department list. Click OK. And now if I click on the drop down, you can see it's nicely sorted and it doesn't contain any blanks. 
and it will automatically update as your data grows. Now we're getting into advanced territory. What if you need a dropdown that changes based on what you select in another dropdown? For example, here I've got product categories and product columns, and they're linked to my product table here. But currently, if I select furniture, I see all 12 products, laptops, desks, printers, paper, etc. Everything's mixed together, and that's asking for errors. What I really want is when someone selects electronics, they only see the electronics items. When they select furniture, they get the furniture items, etc. This is called a dependent or cascading dropdown. And for this, I need a lookup table. I'm going to place it here beside my product table just so that we can see it in context. But you typically have this tucked away on a working sheet. I'm going to start with the product categories and I want them to go across the columns. So I'm going to use the transpose function to flip them. And of course, I want it sorted and I need a unique list of the categories. Close unique, close sort, close transpose. There's my headers on my list of categories. Next, I need to populate those categories with their individual products. And of course, I want them sorted. And then I'm going to use the filter function to extract the products where the category equals the category here. And if it doesn't find anything, I'm going to return a blank as denoted by two double quotes. Close parentheses on sort, close filter, press enter, and it spills the results. And then I'm going to copy it across to the other categories. And in order to allow for more categories to be added, I'm just going to copy it across a few more columns. Control V to paste. We don't see those extra formulas because there's nothing to return. So the blanks are displaying. Now, I don't need to edit the product category data validation list because it's referencing my table. Just remember if the table's on another sheet, you'll want to define a name for that. However, for my product lookup, I'm going to go into data validation and instead of referencing the table, I'm going to use X lookup. What am I looking up? The selected product category. And I want this to be relative, so F4 three times to get rid of the dollar signs. Comma. Where am I looking it up? In this row here going all the way out to column T to allow for growth, comma, what am I returning? The spilled array lists underneath in row seven. Note I'm only selecting the first row. Then I'm going to close parentheses on X lookup. And in order to return the spilled array, we add the hash outside of X lookup. Click OK. And now if I select the drop down for furniture, I only get the furniture items. And if we select office supplies, I only get office supplies, which prevents errors and speeds up data entry. What if you could select one item and have Excel automatically fill in the related information? So here I'm assigning employees to projects and Excel automatically populates the department and hourly rate for me. I'll go back to my demo file and let's look at how we set this up. I've already got my employee name dropdown list inserted and if we open it up, you can see it references the names in the database table. So nothing more to do there. Remember, if this table is on another sheet, then you'll need to define a name for the employee name column first. Now to populate the department and hourly rate, you could use VLOOKUP, index and match, or I'm going to use XLOOKUP. What am I looking up? The employee name. Where am I looking it up? In the employee database table. And what am I returning? The department. If nothing's found, we'll return blank. Close parentheses on X lookup, and there's my results. And I'm just going to copy that formula and we'll paste it in there. And then instead of department, we want hourly rate. Press enter, and that's done. So now when I select my employee from the list, it automatically populates the department and hourly rate. No more work to do. What we just did wasn't about a single trick, it was about combining skills, and that's where the real power of Excel lies. When you know how to bring together features like data validation, lookup functions, and tables, you stop working at the surface and start building solutions that feel effortless. And that's exactly what I teach in my Excel Expert course. Step-by-step -step tutorials, practice workbooks, and real-world projects designed to help you move beyond the basics and actually think like Excel. Most people plateau at basic formulas and dropdowns. The ones who learn to combine skills are the ones who get noticed and promoted and trusted with bigger opportunities. You'll find the link in the description and pinned comment if you're ready to unlock that level. Now, let's move on to our final drop-down method. Here's where modern Excel really shines. 
Instead of manually maintaining drop-down lists, you can use formulas to create them automatically from your data without having to maintain a separate list. Here I have a product catalogue with categories for laptops, tablets, monitors, printers, etc. Some products are active, others are discontinued. If I were building drop-downs the old way, I'd have to maintain a separate list of active products and keep updating them when the status changes. But with Excel's filter function, I can create drop-downs that build themselves. I'm going to generate the list of products beside my order form so we can see it in context, but you can hide it away on a working sheet. So I want to filter the products in my product table where the status equals active. And if nothing's found, I'm going to return blank. Close parentheses on filter. And we get our list of products. However, let's make it more robust. I'll F2 to edit the formula. And at the front, I'm going to wrap it in the unique function, just in case there's duplicates in my table. And why not sort it as well? So we'll add sort. Go to the end, close parentheses on unique and sort. Press enter. And there's my sorted list. So in here, I'm going to add my data validation list and we're going to reference the spilled array here. So I want the hash sign to pick up all the items in the spilled array. Let's test it. By the way, in later versions of Excel, you can have a drop down list automatically filter as you type. So you can see there I've filtered for anything with OF and I've got three items. I can arrow between them and press enter to insert the one that I want. And then we can add an X lookup to look up the product in our products table and return the price. And if nothing's found, we'll return blank. Press enter and there's my price. Job done. In this video, we use some of the newer dynamic array functions like unique and filter. These game changing functions separate Excel pros from everyone else. If you want to master more functions that'll make you indispensable at work, I've got the perfect video for you right here. It covers 10 functions most people don't even know exist. Plus you'll get a free cheat sheet you can use as a quick reference guide. I'll see you there.